What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my full card breakdown and prediction video for UFC Charlotte. We have Jalton Almeida going against Jarzino Rosenstruck. And we are back for another full card breakdown and prediction video this week, breaking down a 12 fight card in UFC Charlotte. Honestly, a, a pretty solid card for a for a fight night, I'd say. Um, I will be attending the card. Uh, me and my wife are celebrating our one year anniversary, so we were heading down to Myrtle Beach, and this is kind of on the way. So, gonna stop at the fights, going to enjoy the fights. Uh, like I said, 12 fights. We were supposed to have 13, but we lost the Mackenzie Dern. Angela Hill fight. Apparently, they're taking that fight off this card and moving it on to the main event of, of next week, which is is interesting. But yeah, this card's solid. Looking forward to it. Um, no bets as of yet, but I'm looking to absolutely drop the hammer on something I really like later in the week. So when the, when those props drop, so yeah, should be a, a good card. Was able to start May off with a with a small win, like a little bit more than a quarter unit. So nothing to really write home about. But maybe can be an even better week this week for UFC Charlotte. I think there's a lot of spots sticking out. Uh, before we start, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Less than 100 subs away from 20,000. So getting really, really close there. If you have not subbed, be sure to do so. Do appreciate that a ton. I do want to shout out the winner for the contest last week, the Significant Strike Contest. Um, shout out to Meow Meow Squad. Uh, Meow Meow uh, dropped 235 in the comments. The correct answer was 234, so it was one away. Congrats, Meow Meow. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram with your PayPal or Cash App, and I will give you your winnings there. Nice guess there. And then other than that, um, going live Friday, um, after the weigh-ins, and then also for Saturday best bet, I'm going to have somebody filling in for me because I will obviously be at the fights. And then um, so I have somebody filling in. The show's still going to be going on on Saturday, so make sure you tune into that as well. All right, with all that out of the way, I say we get into it. We break down some fights, and we're going to start with the first fight of the card. We have a Jessica Rose Clark going against Tainara Lisboa. We got Jessica Rose Clark, 35 years old, five foot five, with a 67 inch reach, 11 and eight. And two and three in her last five fights. Tayanara Lisboa, 32 years old, five foot six, uh, five and two, and four and one in her last five fights. So we'll take a look at the odds here. Uh, very closely lined. We have Jessica Rose Clark actually opening up minus 155. And then we have uh, Lisboa, who opened up like plus 135. And it's currently about a pick 'em. Uh, we have Jessica Rose Clark, like minus 115. And we have Lisboa, like minus 105. So we're starting off the card with, honestly, a very sketchy fight. A very sketchy fight here because how many times do we fall for this trap? Tynar Lisboa, you go and watch her tape. She looks really good. She has a Muay Thai background. I believe she's a Muay Thai champion. Um, honestly, she's shown really good grappling. She's shown a, a lot of good things on tape. And then you take a look at who she's who she's fighting and who she's beating. Like her five wins, 0-0, um, 0-0. Oh and oh, oh and one, and the best person she's beat was one and four, one and four. So she, every time she beats somebody that's not a complete trash can, she's losing. She fought Norma Dumont. That was her debut back in 2016. She got submitted in the first round, and then she fought somebody named Lorani Santos, who was two and one at the time, and she lost that fight by unanimous decision. So anytime she's fought somebody that's somewhat relevant in terms of being an actual fighter she loses the fight so yes she looks really good um she looks like she has solid wrestling striking grappling ground and pound she's dangerous 100 percent finish rate but she's finishing trash cans i mean so it's hard to gauge whether tyanara lisboa is is good or maybe she's a fraud we're gonna have to find out but yeah she's five and two Making her debut at 32 years old, going against Jessica Rose Clark, who I'd imagine a lot of people are very, very low on right now because she's on a two-fight skid, getting submitted in both of those fights, both in the first round. I mean, getting submitted by Stephanie Egger is not the worst look in the world, um, but getting submitted in 42 seconds by Julia Stoliaranko, now now we have some problems. So um, I got to pick Jessica Ro Rose Clark here just by default, just due to the fact that she's fought actual fighters that are you know somewhat decent like she's she's fought panic hands at she's fought jessica i you know she's beaten actual fighters actual fighters like jocelyn edwards i consider her an actual fighter sarah alpar i consider her an actual fighter whereas lisboa has just fought and, and beat nobody so 
Give me Jessica Rose Clark, probably the, one of the most sketchiest fights on the card to kick it off, but I'll take Jessica Rose Clark to win this one by decision. If it turns out Lisbo is the real deal, um, she comes in here, looks good. Maybe she beats Jessica Rose Clark, but she's not shown or proven to me that she can be anybody, um, any what relevant. So give me Jessica Rose Clark to win this fight, but no, no confidence, no bet. I'm not, I'm not betting on this fight. Moving on, we have a really good fight here on the undercard. We have Gabe Green going against Brian Battle. We got Gabe Green, 30 years old, 5'10", with a 73-inch reach, 11-4, and 3-2 and and in his last five fights. Brian Battle, 28 years old, 6'1", with a 77-inch reach, 8-2, and 4-1 and 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 in his last five fights. So, yeah, really good fight here. We'll take a look at the odds here, and they are pretty close. Um, it looks like money has been coming in on Gabe Green, though. He opened up plus 105. He's currently plus or minus 135. Brian Battle opened up minus 125. He's currently plus 115. So these guys remind me a lot like, like each other. Like both of these guys, they have good cardio. Both these guys have really good volume. Both these guys are pretty hittable, but they have good chins, good durability. And both these guys are just dogs. Um, the reason I like the, the Gabe Green side here is because he has a clear path to victory. And the path to victory is clear as day. And that's going to be to take down Brian Battle. I think that's a big hole in the game of Brian Battle's that takedown defense. And we've seen it in a couple of his fights before. Like when he made his debut um, against Gilbert Urbina. Urbina was able to take him down twice in the first round and control him a little bit until Urbina gassed out. And and we saw it against even Treshawn Gore took down Brian Battle twice. So we, we've known that you know, the takedown defense wasn't amazing. And then against uh, Renat Fakhradinov in his last fight, I mean, it was just the, the, one of the worst performances I've ever seen. You know, Fakhradinov was able to take down Brian Battle each and every round. Fakhradinov controlled Brian Battle for 14 minutes and 11 seconds out of a 15-minute fight. I mean, that's, you know, it's embarrassing. Brian Battle landed only three significant strikes in the total of 15 minutes. So on the feet, I think it's close. I think it's competitive. I like the volume of both guys. Um, but with with Gabe Green just having the clear path to victory of if you take down Brian Battle, you're probably going to control him and win minutes on the mat. Uh, for what it's worth, Gabe Green is a brown belt, I believe, in BJJ. So yeah, Gabe Green has a clear path to victory. I, tank, I think he, he takes that clear path to victory and potentially grinds out a decision here. I think both guys are super tough. I don't know if this fight finishes or not. And I think uh, Gabe Green's going to kind of grind this one out and win a decision here against Brian Battle. Oh boy. Moving on, we have Jigong Kim going against Mandy Bum. We got Jion Kim, 33 years old, 5'7", with a 72-inch reach, 9-6, and 1-4 and and in her last five fights. We got Mandy Bum, 33 years old, 5'7", with a 71-inch reach, 7-2, and 3-2 and and in her last five fights. So we'll take a look at the odds here, although nobody should be betting on this fight, but I'm sure there's going to be people that do it. Uh, we have Jion Kim opening up minus 250, currently minus 200. Then we got Mandy Bum opening up plus 210, currently plus 170. Jion Kim, I mean, how could anybody trust her as as a favorite, um, especially this big of a favorite? Has came down a little bit. She was like minus 300, something like that um, at one point. Um, they were supposed to fight a couple months ago. The fight fell off, and I was very happy that fight week when it fell off. And maybe it'll fall off again here, but odds are we're going to have to watch this fight, and I'm going to have to pick a winner. And the winner I'm going to pick is Jion Kim. But laying chalk on her just doesn't seem like the best idea to me. I mean, she's lost her four fights. I think she's on a four-fight skid here. And although Mandy Bum's not good at all, um, it, and it's weird with Mandy Bum. Like, Mandy Bum, she looked honestly solid, like, outside the UFC. Like, she showed really good grappling, um, solid wrestling. You know, decent strike. She looks solid outside the UFC, but she's shown up in the UFC and just looks looks horrible. Got outclassed by Ariana Lipsky. Got outclassed by Victoria Leonardo. So yeah, this should be Jion Kim. Um, Jion Kim, her takedown defense isn't great. Maybe maybe Mandy Bum is able to take her down, but Mandy Bum's just shown no wrestling thus far in the UFC. And if this fight is on the feet, it's going to be Jion Kim, who's just a much better striker. Although. She misses a lot. She has like one of the worst striking accuracies in the UFC, but she's so active. She throws a lot of volume. She's probably going to miss a lot, but it's probably going to trick the judges into thinking she is landing. Um, so I'll take Jion Kim to win this fight, win this fight by decision, but this is a fight that will not be getting any of my money or any of my interest. Moving on, we have a fight that will have my interest. We got Natan Levy going against Pete Rodriguez, uh, absolute banger here. We have Natan Levy, 31 years old, five foot nine, with a 72 inch reach, eight and one 
and four and one in his last five fights. Pete Rodriguez, 26 years old, five foot nine, with a 73 inch reach, five and one, and four and one in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. We see that Natan Levy is around minus 300. Pete Rodriguez plus 250. Um, these guys were supposed to fight as well. We have a couple fights on this card where. They kind of got rescheduled and, and thrown onto this card. But yeah, this was the fight that I was looking forward to a couple weeks back. And Pete Rodriguez had to pull out. Um, I don't know if it was like an illness or like a, a weight cutting thing. Because this is a guy in Pete Rodriguez who is cutting down to 155 for the first time. Which is something to definitely mention. So uh, maybe, you know, he was having trouble with the weight cut. So, which is only more so sketchy on the Pete Rodriguez side for this fight, because he's going to have to cut that weight. We still have not seen him make that weight, and I, I do want to see what Pete Rodriguez does look like um, at the weigh-ins, because I believe he's fought at like 205 before, maybe as an amateur. So, yeah, he's never never fought at lightweight, and we're going to see him on the scales this this Friday, so we'll see. Um, Natan Levy, big favorite. Uh, do I, do I want to lay minus 300 on him? No, but he's the favorite for a couple reasons. Kind of like the... Not really comparable, but kind of um, the Braxton Smith Parker Porter fight last week where Braxton Smith, you, we've seen like him go into the half of the the second half of the first round like never. Same thing with Pete Rodriguez. We've seen him go over one half of a round just once. Like, so we don't know what Pete Rodriguez is going to look like when this fight does get extended a couple minutes in. You know, same thing with Braxton Smith, right? We didn't know what Braxton Smith was going to look like a couple minutes in. And we saw what he looked like a couple minutes in. Terrible. And I don't think it's going to be that bad to that extent. But if this fight does get extended, I do expect Pete Rodriguez to heavily slow down, um, especially cutting down to lightweight for the first time. So, yeah, Natan Levy's a favorite just because we have seen him in a second round. We have seen him in a third round. He's fought solid competition thus far in the UFC, and he's going to have a clear advantage in the grappling. You've got to imagine. Um, we haven't seen Pierre Rodriguez taken down. We haven't seen Pete Rodriguez on his back, but you got to imagine Natan Levy is going to be the much better grappler here because he's shown in the UFC. He's shown to go out there and get takedowns against actual UFC fighters. So um, Pete Rodriguez is going to be live early on. He's going to come forward. He's going to try to take off Natan Levy's head. He's going to try to land a big shot. If he does, he does. But if he doesn't, and if this fight does get extended late first round to the second round especially, it's going to heavily favor somebody Natan Levy. So I'm going to take Natan Levy to win this fight second round submission. I think he's going to constantly take down Pete Rodriguez guys wear on him a little bit get him tired and eventually submit him in that second round there all right moving on we got carlos olberg going against eor pateria we got olberg 32 years old six foot four with a 77 inch reach seven and one and four and one in his last five fights eor pateria 26 years old six foot three with a 75 inch reach 19 and three and four and one in his last five fights, Olberg, the favorite, opened up minus 285, currently minus 400. Eor Pateria opened up plus 245, currently plus 330. Seems like Olberg's a very popular parlay piece this week already on a Monday. Um, so that minus 400 probably continues to get wider and wider. I'm not laying it personally, but I, I see why people are throwing him in the parlays. He's going to be the much better striker. Pateria is not going to have anything for him. I don't think anywhere. Like, Pateria is not going to go out there and, and take down Carlos Olberg. Um, he's not going to outgrapple him. He's not going to out cardio him. And he's not going to outstrike him. Like, Pateria, I don't know. He's, he's, he's 19 and 3, but you take a look at a lot of those wins outside the UFC and he's just not fought the best level of competition um so I'm not sure if Pateri is even honestly UFC caliber yes he, he went out there and beat Shogun Hua who you know was like 40 something at the time I don't put a ton of stock in that performance and then he lost against Nikolai Negamario prior to that whereas we saw Carlos Olver go out there and starch Nikolai Negamariano and by the way that was a very impressive performance by Carlos Olberg. Nobody goes out there and and starches Nikolai Negamarianu. Like Negamarianu has insane durability, has a big old head, um, can eat a shot. But Olberg starched him early in that first round. That was impressive. He starched Tafan and Chukwu in the first round, and I think he starches Ear Pateria. Um, Pateria is going to give Olberg the fight he wants. Like the in, in the fight that he wants is going to be first of all a stand up fight, but Pateria is going to be rushing in with terrible striking defense and Olberg's going to catch him with something. I mean, Olberg's going to knock this guy out and he's going to knock him out in the first round. So, um, I just don't really see a path to victory for Pateria outside of landing a big shot. And it, it could happen. This is MMA, but it's really hard to pick Pateria in this matchup. So give me Olberg to win this fight. I'll say he does starch ER Pateria in the very first round here. 
All right, moving on, we have Cody Stamen going against Douglas Silva de Andrade. We got Cody Stamen, 33 years old, five foot six with a 64 and a half inch reach, 21 and five and two and three in his last five fights. Douglas Silva de Andrade, 37 years old, five foot seven with a 68 and a half inch reach, 28 and five and three and two in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds here. Closely lined fight. Uh, we have Cody Stamen, who opened up minus 175, currently minus 160. Douglas Silva de Andrade opened up plus 150, currently plus 140. Uh, a couple things I'm going to throw out there. Obviously, Douglas Silva de Andrade, this guy is, is now 37 years old at Bantamweight, which he, he is getting up there in age for, for this lower weight class. But I see this fight being super close. Like, on the feet, Cody Stamen's going to probably have the volume edge, but... Cody Stamen, 64 and a half inch reach. You know, uh, Douglas Silva de Andrade is going to have a four inch reach advantage here. I think that's important to mention. And then on top of that, Douglas Silva de Andrade is going to have all the power upside, all the finish upside. Like, for example, uh, I do the, the, the finish only, the scorecards, no action bets every once in a while. And right now they have Douglas Silva de Andrade finish only at like minus 325. And that tells you everything you, you need to know. Like, if there's a finish in this matchup, it's going to come from the Douglas Silva de Andrade side here. Um, so I think all the finishing upsides on the Andrade side. I think all the power is on the Andrade side on the feet. So although I do think the striking is going to be very competitive, the volume of stamen, the power of Andrade, um, you know, I could see Andrade hurting stamen. I could see him maybe dropping stamen. And then, you know, obviously stamen's a wrestler, a very good wrestler, but uh, Douglas Silva de Andrade is has a good takedown defense and has an even better get-up game. This guy, when he gets taken down, he's, he's popping right back up. So I expect Stamen to go for takedowns. I expect Stamen to probably get some takedowns, but I just really struggle to see Stamen taking down and holding down someone like Douglas Silva de Andrade. So close, close fight. I think it's a fight that probably does go the distance. Um, I'm going to pick Andrade here to win. I think it's a close one. I like the power of Andrade. I like the finishing upside from Andrade. I'll take him to win just by landing the bigger shots across three rounds, having the bigger moments, and winning probably a split decision. I think this fight's super close. So give me uh, Douglas Silva de Andrade to win this fight. I'll take him to win this fight by decision. Moving on to another fight we were supposed to, to watch um, a couple weeks ago. We got Carl Williams going against Chase Sherman. We got Carl Williams, 33 years old, six foot three, with a 79 inch reach, eight and one, and five and zero in his last five fights. Chase Sherman, 33 years old, six foot four, with a 78 inch reach, 16 and 11, and one and four in his last five fights. Carl Williams, one of the biggest favorites on the card. I think the second biggest. Um, we have him at minus 410 now. He opened up minus 355, and then Chase Sherman. One of the biggest dogs on the card opened up plus 290, currently plus 310. And that's because, and, and honestly, I don't think Carl Williams is like an, some amazing fighter. It's just in this matchup specifically, it's a really good matchup for him. Chase Sherman has terrible takedown defense, and he has one of the worst ground games you'll ever see. I mean, this guy just has no idea what to do when he's put on his back. We've seen that against Alexander Romanov. We saw that even against Jake Collier, of all people. Collier took him down. He, like, got in a mount instantly. Um, he took his back and, and subbed him in the first couple minutes of the first round. So, I mean, if Jake Collier's dominating you on the mat at this point of Jake Collier's career, I mean, there's there's serious problems with that ground game. Um, Carl Williams, really good wrestling. Really good wrestling. Wrestling background. I remember he went on there on the Contender Series, um, went on there on short notice, and up a weight class even. This is a guy that's, you know, fought at light heavyweight a lot of his career. But yeah, came in on contender series, fought that Penn State wrestler, Jimmy Lawson, and he was a dog there. And a lot of people were expecting Jimmy Lawson to obviously out wrestle Carl Williams, but it was actually the other way around. Carl Williams out wrestled Jimmy Lawson for each and every single round there. So yeah, Williams does have really good wrestling, and that's going to be a problem here for Chase Sherman, who A can't stuff a takedown and B can't get back up if he does get taken down. So yeah, this should be Carl Williams. Obviously, obviously, this is a heavyweight fight. Chase Sherman does have power. Carl Williams did look a little bit um, like he slowed down a little bit in the Bresky fight his last time out. But I gotta go Bres I gotta go Williams here to win this fight. I gotta I gotta go Williams to win this fight, even inside the distance. I think Chase Sherman's ground game is such a liability that although Carl Williams is not finishing anybody, I think he gets a finish here. I think I think if Carl Williams does not finish Chase Sherman. He will never finish anybody in the rest of his career because this is like a, a tailor-made matchup for Carl Williams to go out there, 
take Sherman down, pound him out, sub him. Chase Sherman's ground game's crap. So give me a Carl Williams to win this fight. I'll take him to win this fight inside the distance. Could be KO sub. Whatever he wants to do, I think he gets it done here, though. All right, we will move on to the next fight we have. Court McGee going against Matt Brown. I believe this kicks off the the main card now that that Dern fight's off. Um, we got Court McGee. 38 years old, 5'11", with a 75.5-inch reach, 21 and 11 and 2 and 3 in his last five fights. Matt Brown, 42 years old, 6' foot with a 76-inch reach, 23 and 19 and 2 and 3 in his last five fights. We have Court McGee as a pretty decent-sized favorite, which is kind of terrifying. He opened up plus 140 as a dog for some reason, now plus 225. Matt Brown opened up minus 160 for some reason, and he's currently plus 190. And... Yeah, I, I got to go Court McGee, but I mean, I can I don't think I could ever trust Court McGee again after that Carlos Condit fight. Like that was probably one of the worst, if not the worst game plans I've ever seen in my life, which is weird for Court McGee cuz Court McGee's typically a smart fighter, like he's a, he's a veteran of the sport and he's been fighting for a long time. You would think that that Court McGee would go out there and, and take down Carlos Condit, who has a 38% takedown defense. You, you would think so, but no. In that Carlos Condit fight, Court McGee didn't attempt one takedown, and that still puzzles me to this day. If he goes out there with Matt Brown and strikes with him for 15 minutes for some reason, he's not looking minus 225. But where, we, where he will look minus 225 is going out there with the right game plan, and that's going to be taking down Matt Brown. We've seen Matt Brown taken down and controlled in the past, and Court McGee's really good at wrestling. Um, he has a really good cardio. He's going to have the better cardio here. He's going to be younger. Matt Brown, 42 years old at this point. I don't think Matt Brown has the best takedown defense, get-up game, or cardio. So, yeah, Court McGee should be able to, to wear on Matt Brown, take him down consistently. Um, if Matt Brown gets back up, you know, take him right back down, I think... I, I, I would I would not trust McGee here, though, after that Condit situation. If I knew for a fact McGee would come out here and, and wrestle hard for 15 minutes, it's, it's McGee all day. It's just, will he do that or not? And that is to be seen, but uh, I'll say he does do that. I'll say he goes out there, takes down Matt Brown, rinse the repeat, and grinds this guy across three rounds. Maybe even a late finish could be on the table here because I think Matt Brown, now at 42 years old, I don't think he has the best cardio. He's been finished 13 times, so... You know what? I'll, I'll say Court McGee does get that get that late finish. I'll say third round submission for Court McGee. Um, hoping he comes out here with the the right game plan. So third round sub, Court McGee. I think he gets it done. All right. So moving on, we got um, Alex Morono going against Tim Means. We got Morono, thirty two years old, five foot eleven, with a seventy two inch reach, twenty two and eight. And four and one in his last five fights. Tim Means, 39 years old, six foot two with a 75 inch reach, 32, 14 and one, and three and two in his last five fights. Let's take a look at these odds. We see that Morono is the favorite, opening up minus 325, currently minus 215. Tim Means, the dog, opening up plus 275, currently plus 185. So I'm a huge Tim Means fan. Um, I, I like this guy's style. Always been a big fan of him. He's a guy that really never in a boring fight outside of like the Staropoli fight. But he, he's a guy that has really good volume, really good wrestling, offensively, defensively, uh, a lot of power, a lot of finishing ability. Um, he's a guy that used to be just next level tough, next level durable. You know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tim Means. It's just 39 years old now for Tim Means. 39 years old. This is going to be his 48th fight, and I have some serious concerns with Tim Means at this point of his career. Not only is he 39 years old, not only is this his 48th fight, but man, he's taken a ton of damage as of late. Like, this is a guy in Tim Means who, like I said, he used to have that next level toughness, that next level durability, and then all of a sudden, Nico Price starches him, and then all of a sudden, Daniel Rodriguez is, is wobbling this guy all around and then subbing him. Um, all of a sudden, he's getting dropped by guys like Max Griffin. All of a sudden, he's getting dropped by you know Kevin Holland and submitted. I think the durability of Tim Means, which was 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 once there and once very good, I think the d durability has completely diminished at this point. So I'm worried about the age, you know, the the mileage, the damage. I'm worried about the durability, and on top of that, I'm just worried about where Tim Means his head is at. You know, is he all in at this point? Because you take a look at his Instagram, and it looks like he's all in in terms of being a wrestling coach nowadays. You know, you take a look at his Insta. Uh, all it is, is 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 wrestling, and that's great. You know, he's he's enjoying coaching, but is he all in in terms of his UFC career? 
I think this might be the last fight for Tim Means. And if this is not the last fight, I think it's it's very soon that we're going to see Tim Means retire. I just have not liked how he's looked as of late in terms of that durability, in terms of his chin holding up. Um, he lost a split decision in his last fight against Max Griffin. I don't know what corrupt judge would would score that fight for for Tim Means. It was it was clearly that uh, it was clearly a Max Griffin dub there. And then, like I said, the Kevin Holland fight before that gets club and subbed. Pulled off some solid wins against Perry, Dalby, and Staropoli, but I think Morono goes out here and knocks him out. I think Morono, I think this looks a little bit like the Alex Morono, Donald Cerrone fight, where Donald Cerrone was towards the end of his, end of his career. Donald Cerrone did not have that durability anymore. Morono landed a big shot, and once he landed the big shot and it hurt him, he swarmed him and got him out of there. I think Morono does the same thing, lands a big shot, swarms, means, finishes him, whether it's a, a club and sub. Whether it's a knockout, I think Ramona finishes Tim Means. And I think Means potentially retires here. And like I said, if he does not retire this fight, I think it's coming up pretty soon here. So give me Alex Morona to win this fight. I'll say he wins this fight by second round knockout. I think he knocks out Tim Means on Saturday. All right, a couple fights left. We got Ian Machado, Gary going against Daniel Rodriguez. We got Gary, 25 years old, six foot three with a 74 inch reach, 11 0. And 5-0 in his last five fights. Daniel Rodriguez, 36 years old, 6'1", with a 74-inch reach, 17-3, and 4-1 and and in his last five fights. Ian Gary, huge favorite here. Oh my gosh, huge favorite. Open up minus 210, currently minus 300. So he just dropped a, a, a big bag on uh, on Mr. Gary. Daniel Rodriguez, whew, uh, open up plus 180, currently plus 250. Y'all are y'all are wildin'. Um, I think it's a close fight. I really do. Um, it's one of those fights though where I think it's close, but I think Gary probably ends up winning. But my goodness, um, this is a fight that's going to take place on the feet at range. I don't see either guy grappling at all. And when it does, yes, Gary's he's younger, he's bigger, he's he's faster. But Daniel Rodriguez has really good striking, really good striking, really good volume from Daniel Rodriguez. He has more, I don't want to say more power, but more durability, I'd say. Daniel Rodriguez is as tough as they come. Um, the last time he fought was actually the first time he got finished by Neil Magny, which was a weird situation. I didn't think D-Rod was ever getting finished because this guy is so tough. But I expect this fight to take place at range on the feet, and I think both guys have really good volume. It's just what I don't like about Gary and I like a lot of things about this guy. I think he's a really good striker. I think he's well-rounded. I think he does have sneaky grappling. I think he has good takedown defense. I think he has a lot of good things going for him. Only 25 years old, training at a good gym. It's just the one thing I don't like about Ian Gary. And this one thing has kind of showed thus far in the UFC. It's his striking defense, man. His striking defense is a huge liability. If he can fix that striking defense, I think this guy is indeed the future. I really do. But it's that strike and defense, the one thing that concerns me. Like, I remember taping this guy prior to him making his debut. And I had a big bet on Ian Gary um, in his debut fight against Jordan Williams. But the one thing when watching tape is like, man, this guy's striking defense is, is not great. Um, his hands are low at times. He has that tall man's defense, chin up in the air. He can get hit clean. And, you know, Jordan Williams was piecing this guy up. Jordan Williams, you know, was outlanding this guy. And then all of a sudden, Ian Gary knocks him out at the end of the first. But I was I was terrified with how the fight was going. Because um, I had a big bet on Ian Gary as a, as a big favorite, too. Um, he beats Weeks. He beats Green. And then the Song Kanan fight. This guy was, like, minus 800. And he gets dropped against, <laughs> against Song Kanan. Song Kanan drops this guy. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I, this is a fight. I think it's, I think it's competitive. I really do. Um, I'm going to take the dog here and Danny Rodriguez to pull it off, but I already know what's going to happen. I think D-Rod is going to make this super close. It's going to look like a super close fight, and then the corrupt judges are going to score it for, for Ian Gary. Um, you know, who who does the UFC want to win this fight? Do, do they want the, the young 25-year-old Ian Gary to win this fight, or do they want the 36-year-old Daniel Rodriguez, who's on his way out, to win this fight? I mean, the UFC wants Ian Gary to win this fight all day, and I think that's probably what happens, but in terms of a pick, I'll, I'll pick the dog. I mean, I just don't really get this line. Gary's not knocking out D-Rod. Gary's not out grappling D-Rod. I think we're going to get a 15-minute fight on the feet. I think it goes to decision. I think it's close. Give me the dog here and Daniel Rodriguez to uh, to pull off the upset, but it's not something you could be completely confident in. But uh, I would not be laying minus 300 on Ian Gary. I think that's kind of whack, to be honest. Does he win? 
potentially, but minus 300 is kind of whack in my opinion. All right, co-main event. We got Johnny Walker going against Anthony Smith. Very good co-main event here. Very violent co-main event. We got Johnny Walker, 31 years old, six foot six, with an 82 inch reach, 20 and seven, and three and two in his last five fights. Anthony Smith, 34 years old, six foot four, with a 76 inch reach, 36 and 17, and three and two in his last five fights. So, we'll take a look at the odds. Straight pick him here. Uh, Johnny Walker opened up minus 155, minus 110. Anthony Smith opened up plus 135, minus 110, straight pick him, and I agree with, with that. I mean, this is about as, as a pick him as a fight as you're going to get, in my opinion, just because both these guys really are just un, untrustworthy to me. Um, Anthony Smith, I think, is a good fighter. This guy has a ton of fights un, under um, under the UFC, um, but man, like some fights he looks really good, and then some fights he just looks washed. He looks bad, which is which is crazy. So, like people were calling this guy washed like like three years ago, and then he, he keeps coming out here and looking good in a lot of fights. But again, he, there's some fights where he looks really really bad. So, and then we got Johnny Walker who has all the physical tool like he's six six eighty two inch reach, but he has no chin. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think it all comes down to to who lands that that big shot first. I don't see Anthony Smith taking down Johnny Walker. And subbing him, I think Johnny Walker's takedown defense is good enough, and I don't think Anthony Smith has the best wrestling. I think we're going to get a striking fight. Um, I guess Johnny Walker could take down Anthony Smith if he wants to, I suppose, just because Anthony Smith has atrocious takedown defense, but I kind of expect Johnny Walker to keep this on the feet. And when it's on the feet, you're going to have Anthony Smith in terms of the volume, but you're going to have Johnny Walker, who's absolutely going to have the power advantage. And then when we're talking durability... I don't think either guy's durable at all. I think both of these guys are live to knock out the other guy in the first round. So, uh, like I said, about as 50-50 of a fight as you're going to get, in my opinion. I'm going to take Johnny Walker to land that big shot, land that big knockout shot, and knock out Anthony Smith in the first round. But I don't know. I don't know. Least least confident pick of the card for me here. Give me Johnny Walker, KO1. I think he knocks out Anthony Smith early on. But the chin of Johnny Walker is uh, a major concern. And Anthony Smith does have power. So, but I think the more powerful guy is absolutely Johnny Walker. And I'll say he does knock out Anthony Smith. And I think he gives Anthony Smith, like, Anthony Smith has finished so many times. I think Anthony, he gives Anthony Smith his, what, 15th finish loss. So, yeah, give me Johnny Walker to give Anthony Smith his 15th finish loss in this one. All right. Main event. Fun main event. We got Jalton Almeida going against Jarzino Rosenstruck. We got Almeida, 31 years old, six foot three with a 79 inch reach, 18 and two, five and zero in his last five fights. Jarzino Rosenstruck, 35 years old, six foot two with a 78 inch reach, 13 and four and two and three in his last five fights. Jalton Almeida, the biggest favorite on the card, opening up minus 310, currently minus 510. Jarzino Rosenstruck opening up plus 260, currently plus 385. Yeah, I mean, pretty pretty simple fight to, to break down here. Um, striker versus grappler matchup. Jalton Almeida, in his interviews, he always talks about how good his striking is. And then he goes into the fight and shoots a takedown within the first 10 seconds. So we don't, we don't know. We don't know how good or how bad uh, Jalton Almeida's striking is because we've literally never seen it. And my guess is we, we never will until we can get somebody that can stuff a takedown. And we probably won't find that someone for, for a couple more fights. So, yeah, we're not going to see any striking out of Jalton Almeida if we do. Rosenstruck probably knocks him out. Uh, Jalton Almeida is going to go for a takedown within the first 10 seconds. I mean, I can almost guarantee it's going to be like the first 10 to 20 seconds he's going to shoot a takedown, and he's probably going to get the takedown. I don't think Rosenstruck has good takedown defense, and I absolutely don't think he has a good ground game. I mean, we saw um, Overeem take him down multiple times. We saw Blaze take him down multiple times. We saw Junior Albini out of all people, take him down multiple times. And Junior Albini was able to get in like in like the mount. Junior Albini about took his back. Uh, Junior Albini almost submitted this guy. I mean, if Junior Albini is almost getting you out of there on the mat, you know, what is Jalton Almeida going to do? So um, this has got to be Jalton Almeida. I don't think he's going to mess around on the feet with Rosenstruck at all. I think he gets a takedown within the first 10 seconds. And the fight's probably over shortly after. Rosenstruck tends to give up his back when he's standing back up. Jalton Almeida is not your typical... You know, unathletic heavyweight. Um, he's very, very athletic, very good on the mat. He's going to be able to take Rosenstruck's back um, a lot easier than like a like a junior Albini. Um, and then once he does take his back, it's going to be over. He's going to either pound him out, he's going to submit him. You know, whatever he wants to do, he's going to do it. First round finish for Jalton Almeida. 
Um, pretty hilarious fight, to be honest. And it's a fight that's not going to last long, but I'm kind of intrigued for this one, for sure. I think it's going to be, it's gonna be a good one for as long as it lasts. But give me Jonathan Almeida to win this fight. I will say first round. Flip a coin between sub or KO. I'll say first round sub. Why not? All right. But those are the picks. Solid card. It's a solid card. A couple spots sticking out. Like I said, no bets yet, but I'm looking forward to potentially placing my biggest bet of the year if the if the line is right. If the line is right, a um, couple dog shots sticking out as well. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I what I have throughout the week. I'll talk about it Friday, and then Saturday. If you guys want early bets, check out DFSbythenumbers.com. Also doing a ton of other content on there, articles, all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, guys, leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. Consider subscribing, and let's try to hit that 20k goal in the very near future best of luck for ufc charlotte should be a good car should be a fun car for me to, to watch live outside of the mandy bum fight but maybe i could find something else to do while that fight is on what we'll to see but uh yeah guys best of luck for this card and talk to you soon see you